Beginning in the early 90s, several talented power forwards began to come into the NBA to display their post skills. As a result, the NBA in the 1990s and 2000s was filled with players at the four position where opposing coaches had to seriously think about coming at them with a double team. One of those post players who was hard to contain was Vin Baker, and because of all the talent at the power forward position, it was hard for skilled players like Vin Baker to stand out. This video is going to take a look at Vin Baker's career and his talent. I began to follow the NBA draft in 1992. Then for the 1993 NBA draft, I was surprised to see the Milwaukee Bucks select a 6'11 power forward from Hartford, 8th overall. Now I understood that there were several solid players from lesser known schools, but for some reason I was surprised the Bucks chose a player that I never heard of and from a school that I never heard of. But you know what? It turned out to be an excellent selection. The Bucks got quite the post score in Vin Baker 8th overall out of Hartford, and after being named to the All-Rookie team, Baker would go on to be selected as an Eastern Conference All-Star his next three seasons in Milwaukee, in which I think is quite the accomplishment because of all the talents coming into the NBA at the power forward position. When I think about Vin Baker, one move that always comes to mind, which is Baker getting the ball in the post on the left side and then going hard toward the middle of the lane and getting a shot up. Meanwhile, on the right side in the post, Baker had more ways to score, like shooting a turnaround jumpers as soon as he caught the ball, or he could dribble deeper in the post and use south footwork to get shots off. Baker, he could also shoot from the mid-range and can face up his opponent and score that way too. To simply put it, it was tough to guard Vin Baker. Additionally, Milwaukee had some other young talented players in Glenn Robinson and Ray Allen, but the Bucks weren't close to making the playoffs. Perhaps that led to Vin Baker being traded. As part of a three-team trade, Vin Baker went to Seattle. The other main players in his trade include Sean Kemp going to Cleveland and point guard Terrell Brandon going to Milwaukee. Vin Baker once again played well in Seattle and was named an All-Star once again. Moreover, Baker finally experienced team success as the Sonics for the 97-98 season finished with a 61-21 record, but lost to the Lakers in the second round. Things were seemingly going to continue to go well for Baker. But for the following year, a lockout postponed the start of the NBA season. I remember on an open court episode on TNT, Steve Kerr said that the lockout hurt some players because they need that structure of practicing and working out. Essentially, the lockout perhaps resulted in players being out of shape. After the lockout, Vin Baker's weight ballooned to nearly 300 pounds. Sadly, Baker then suffered with alcoholism and depression and unfortunately wasn't the same player until his last NBA season in 2006. Now I don't want to go into Vin Baker's hardships and how he hit rock bottom, although I do want to mention that I think it's tremendous how much of a changed man Baker has seemingly become. But instead, I wanted to document Vin Baker's skills as a player, I wanted to document how talented of a power forward he was, and I wanted to simply document and remember Vin Baker's positive play on the court. I like to say that from the early 90s to the late 2000s, this was the golden age of power forwards in the NBA, as Vin Baker was a huge part of that era. Real quick, I just want to thank all those who have supported 90 Sports Nostalgia. Don't forget to subscribe, like, comment, share, and check out the links below for Patreon and merch. Thank you so much. Remembering Vin Baker with the Milwaukee Bucks and the Seattle Supersonics.